guys, and welcome to the Boom Tequila Podcast with your hosts. I'm Erin. I'm Ashley. I'm Jesse. I'm Shay. And I'm Jody. So if you guys haven't figured out by now, this is Girl Talk Part 2. We have some of our very special guests with us. They have been with us before. I think most of them, Ashley and Shay, have been on multiple. This is Jess's second with us, I think, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Ashley, what was your episode? My episode was about Enneagrams. Awesome. What was yours, Shay? Uh, I did tarot. And Jesse was Girl Talk Part One. So let's do it to it, guys. Are you ready? Yes. (laughs) Ready. (laughs) Woo! Woo! Yeah. Let's go. (laughs) Such a I feel like we need a redo on the enthusiasm. (laughs) (laughs) We all had our mics muted. So I love it. And I just told everyone, I'm like, try not to talk at the same time. And then I ask everyone a question and they're like, wait, do I say something? You're like, (laughs) all right. So I know that by the time this episode releases, we'll be into April, just a few days after women's history month. But I believe that we deserve way more than a month to celebrate women in our history. So with that being said, welcome to today's episode, Girl Talk Part Two. Now, if you remember our last Girl Talk episode, we talked about lots of different topics, but today's episode will be more focused on the differences between men and women in all different situations, especially the workplace stuff. It has been more than a century since women were given the right to vote. And the sad fact is that there's still so much that needs to change. The word feminism is sometimes considered a controversial word, which it shouldn't be, but... (laughs) The actual definition of it is really impossible to argue with. An effort to make sure that every woman and every individual has rights equal to that of a man, no matter their race, religion, gender identification, sexual preferences, or anything else. Preach it, girl. Let's talk about some ways that women aren't equal to men. Do you want to start with number one, Shay? Women pay more for common household items than men do. If you take everyday items like shampoo, deodorant, or even just socks, you'll find that these products cost more for women than men. BS. That's right. I had a coworker who was talking about this, like, you know, pre-pandemic when we actually saw coworkers, but for me at least, (laughs) but she was talking about the fact that like she has girls and she was shopping for shorts and she's like, the shorts for the girls are half the material of the shorts for the men. Like you can only find short shorts for girls, but yet they were 30 to a hundred percent higher in price than the boys shorts of the same brands with more material. Anyways, I found that a lot when I was doing research for this about like how so many, like literally everything that's geared towards girls and women is so much more than for men. Mm -hmm. Even as simple as a haircut, like a boy's haircut, like just a trim is cheaper than like a girl getting just like her ends cut off, like nothing fancy. Like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the pink tax? It means that items geared towards women cost more toys and accessories for girls are found to be 7% higher. It's even been found that women pay more for senior healthcare products than men, which means that we pay more for common items from the beginning to the very end of our lives, which is so great since we make less money than men. Yeah. (laughs) Works out perfect for us. Right. I just have something to add to the, um, the wage thing. Like one of the things I looked up was that women starting their career today stand to lose more than $430,000 over the working years due to the gender wage gap. But then if you break that even down further, like Latina women lose a million dollars in wages because of the wage gap and then discrimination on their ethnicity. And Black women lose more than $700,000 a year because of the same issues. And that's just the wage gap. That does not take into consideration opportunities that are opportuned more to men than women and things like that. So (laughs) even picking like baby stuff, as I look through, like it'd be the same thing on Amazon, like that I'll like buy for like, you know, my foster son. If I change the color to something that's more gender, like, stereotypically gender neutral or geared towards a girl it's more expensive than if I go with like the blue or green item but if I go towards like a yellow or orange item it's higher and I'm assuming because they're classifying those as girl colors which is fun because did you know that pink used to actually be the color for boys yes yes. I didn't know that Mm -hmm. really those were 
Yeah. Yeah. For boys too. And high heels used to be for men as well. No way. Yep. Yeah. A king was actually the first one to wear high heels. That's crazy. I learned something mm-hmm. every day. More men were cheerleaders back in the day than women were. It wasn't fully acceptable for females to be cheerleaders when cheerleading started. That's funny. Wow. <laughs> All right. Number three. Women are underrepresented in government. Although women make up nearly 51% of the U.S. population, only 27% of Congress is comprised of women. And I looked into that one further because I thought that was interesting. Out of the 27%, only 4% are non-white. Wow. And then it wasn't until 1993 that women were allowed to wear pants on the floor of Congress. 1993. Oh my gosh. Was like like we are older than women could wear pants on the Congress floor. Oh my gosh. And it wasn't until 2011 that they put a bathroom for the women on that level of the Congress floor for women. Mm. I mean, I like a good skirt, especially when it's a maxi skirt or like a peasant skirt, but I love my pants, especially in the winter. Who's Hillary Clinton without a pantsuit? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Women are the minority in the executive suite. According to Fortune, women currently account for just 7.4% of CEOs. Women in these positions also, on average, only stay on for about 44 months, while men average around 60 months. Female entrepreneurs receive less funding and investments. Only 11% of venture capitalists are women and of existing firms, 71% don't even have a single female partner. Despite the fact that women are more educated and more employed than ever before, they are still tasked with the majority of household duties. They are more likely to work from home, look after sick kids, or even quit their jobs completely to be caretakers. And this is often not by choice. This is typically, in a lot of cases, because they need to, to support the household. If men make more and- money, it makes more sense for... <laughs> The women just did not go to work since the men are going to bring in more money anyway. Yeah, well, that's assuming you've got a man supporting the household. This is true. As I sit here folding laundry (laughs) while my my lesbian partner makes dinner. (laughs) Well, and I know that I said that uh, women are more educated and more employed than ever before. In fact, I think women actually are more educated than men. Don't quote me on this because I don't have the statistic pulled, but I want to say that women tend to graduate from college at higher rates and black women specifically are the most educated group demographically and the lowest paid. So the idea that because you, you know, oh, well, if there were more qualified candidates, we'd hire more black women or more women or whatever is complete bullshit. That's all. (laughs) And see, I'm a weird (laughs) one with that statistic. Like my husband and I have been like the exact opposite, like our whole relationship. I work he stayed at home with the kids. He cooked, he cleaned. Mm-hmm. Well, then people act like being a stay at home mom is like, no big deal. It's so relaxing, but being someone that's done both, like just been the stay at home mom and gone to work. It is so much harder being a stay at home mom. I mean, physically and like with your mental health as well. Yeah. I'm- I tried for the out. first little bit when the kids were little and he would come home from work and he's like, why is the house like this? And I'm like, look, you don't understand. I've cleaned it four times already. And they came through like a hurricane. And then the first couple of weeks when we swapped roles and I went back to work and he stayed at home, he's like, totally get what you were saying. I get it. I understand. I'm like, it's not a walk in the park. No, women are more likely to be injured in car crashes. And the reason is actually pretty infuriating. Women are 47% more likely to be injured in car crashes because safety features are actually designed for men despite men driving more reckless behind the wheel. Women are three times as likely to get a moderate injury and twice as likely to be severely injured. And despite this, women pay more for cars and car insurance. Women experience medical side effects to a disproportionate degree because drugs are designed for male bodies. According to the University of Chicago, women are often excluded from clinical trials for medications because the unfounded and disproven belief females' hormonal cycles skew the test results. Not only are women excluded from trials, but labs go as far to use male mice instead of female mice during early stages of development. 
As a result, women are often misdiagnosed and overmedicated, ending up with higher concentrations of medication in their blood than men with the same prescriptions. Now that's bullshit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's a whole bunch of medical stuff we could get into. Oh, oh my gosh, dude. That was like, that was also like the car insurance stuff and like the safety features pissed me off, but the medical stuff was outrageous. Mm-hmm. Well, and one that's been like a big popular topic on like TikTok and social media lately is talking a lot about IUDs for women and birth control and things like that. And so there's like when an IUD is implanted into a woman's cervix, there's no pain medication, no anything like that. And there are a lot of other procedures, LEAP procedures and, and other things. In a LEAP procedure, for instance, it's a surgical procedure where they are actually cauterizing or burning the cervix. And there is no anesthesia or anything for this. But yet when a man gets a vasectomy, which is a really tiny snip, painless, they get the full, you know, shebang. Full Monty. <laughs> Right. They go home with pain meds, the whole deal. And it's like, and then women, when they say they're in pain, they tend to be believed less. There's yeah, we could have a whole episode just on, just on that. And they did the, what is it? The machine that stimulates like the labor pains, whatever. I don't remember what it's called, but there was a bunch of those TikToks going around and the guys would stand next to their wives. The wives would be on like 10 and the guys would be on two and they'd be crying. And I'm like, seriously, like our cramps, and our, like when we're on our periods and our menstrual cramps, do they are literally mini heart attacks. Like we survive that on a daily basis with no pain meds 90% of the time. And like, they're debilitating for some mm-hmm. people, but. Yeah. I mean, I know having a child, I remember the early stages of labor. I thought, well, this feels like cramps, like in, in a sequence, mm-hmm. um, early stages. Now as it progresses, it gets worse, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Fun, fun stuff. The, um, the videos, I like that they have the TikTok kind of educational videos about the IUD stuff, because I've been hearing this go around for so long about how women are saying it's so painful to get them inserted. It's so painful to get them taken out because the tool that they use literally like jabs into your cervix and men think that, oh, there's no nerve endings down there. They can't, there's no way you can feel that. You can't feel that. And it's like, you it's literally you can feel everything it's extremely painful and they think oh it just it takes a couple seconds it's no big deal but like I don't know anyone that's had that done and felt no pain at all well and most of the tools that are now used in today's gynecological appointments were experimented on black women because they said that black women couldn't feel pain So they use them as guinea pigs to test out their tools and devices and stuff. That's awful. Yeah, which then like systemically now leads to like women, Black women are like three times more likely to die from like giving childbirth or postpartum because they also have this like ingrained fear of going to the doctor because of all the treatment that they get. This is kind of off topic, but kind of not. Did you guys ever Google the reason that chainsaws were invented? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> don't Google it. I think you have to know. Don't do it. <laughs> it's been a long time don't since I looked, but wasn't it like little mini chainsaws and they were made to like help with childbirth or something? Like, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyways, there are so <laughs> many that we could go on. But some of the most common ones are women are more likely to be victims of human trafficking, female soldiers facing harassment and sexual assault at a ridiculous amount. Women overall are at a greater risk of rape and domestic violence. Retired women are twice as likely as retired men to live in poverty. Women spend more on health insurance and health care, even though female pain and medical issues are not taken as seriously as they are for men. And this brings us to our topic of today's episode, how women are treated differently in the workplace. So let's start off with pay differences. Typically women are making 79% of what their male counterparts earn. Have any of you guys experienced this? I fortunately have not. I'm the minority on this one. I definitely have. I mean, I've, I've definitely been in positions where I know that male counterparts who are less qualified than myself are making more than I am. And it's, it's frustrating. I have as a manager had to sometimes fight for pay increases harder on some of my like female employees than on some of my male employees, 
but the effort that I had to put in was a lot harder, like a lot more to make my owners or, or anything like my franchisees, like realize like that this person needed a raise or, or something like that. I don't know that I have, because I've mostly just been in the salon by myself for a long time and just working in a salon. I mostly just work with women. So, but I have heard of it. I have heard of it happening a lot, especially in like bigger companies and that, but also places I've worked, I don't really know what other people make. So I don't know. Yeah. I think that's a lot of it. And I, I want to say there is actually uh, a law that was passed a while ago where they, a company cannot penalize you or it's not illegal to share what you make with coworkers. Now, I don't think like if you're a manager, I don't think I could go around and share what my employees make with others or what other people make, but you're allowed to share what you make. And I do think that's where a lot of it gets kind of easier to hide is that men aren't sharing what they're making. And so unless you overhear a conversation or they happen to share that information with you, you're not going to necessarily think that it's happening to you. But the reality is, statistically, it is probably happening to you if you're female in the workplace. <laughs> it's scary to think that like you see it all the time, like, on, like with actresses and stuff like that's like a huge, large scale. Like, I mean, we're talking like millions and billions of dollars, but like if, if even those women can't get proper pay or equal pay like what does that do for like normal women and and things like like that's why it's important for even like pop culture to take a stand in it too like it's it's crazy that even you know people walk away from big movies and stuff because the male lead is going to make more than the female lead I don't think I've really experienced that because working in a factory whatever job I've worked at, unless you're talking about someone on the old contract, you know, whatever at work, pretty much making the same amount of pay, unless it, you know, it just depends if you're a level two, three or four, yada, yada on all that. I don't think I've really had to experience anything like that. So it's like a standard, like if you work in this position, everyone makes, everyone makes this amount. And then if you like move up, you make this much, or is that kind of how that works? Kind of, because I mean, there's people like we call them like the old timers. Um, it's uh, the old contract people. They make a certain amount of money in each, you know, level three, four, whatever, you know, grade level of job you're at. That's the only real difference. Now, if you're like what Shay and I are, if you're a level three or a level four, you're topped out the same as everybody. And if everybody gets a raise, if they you know, give them out. So, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Well, that's good that they keep it fair. Yeah, that is good. Uh, So do you, do you actually know how much your male counterparts work? Cause what I've seen on the hiring end of that is what they'll do is they'll have a pay range for each position. And then oftentimes the females will fall in the lower end of that range, but they don't actually say that and nobody's sharing how much they make. And so it, gives the appearance of everyone makes the same amount because we've this, this is the range for this position, but the, how it actually hashes out is the women tend to make a little less. And that's where you get those discrepancies. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just, no, I mean, I could see to where they'd probably hire a woman on a match bench before they would hire them for a machine job, just because they're a man, they might be more, you know, mechanically inclined than what a woman would be. But most of the time it, I don't know. I haven't noticed anything too unfair with that. I mean, if you you have the experience, okay. And we're also protected. We have a union contract that says this is like the starting pay for this class. Everyone hired in at this class starts at this. And then we have like a tier system. So like, I think, what is it? Every six months we're supposed to go up yeah you're like in within that tier itself within three years you top out and pay now the old timers and the old contract they've had the same pay since the 90s they haven't had a raise at all and that is a definitely a big stink with them yeah is it one of those things Uh, where they have like a top out like you can only make this much and then yeah that's such bullshit see but there's the other side of this they have uh, they've made the same amount of pay forever okay but we will never see that the amount of money they make now we'll never see that and there's something else called y time which is like personal time they get 50 hours of y time whenever us like shay 
and I, we get like, we get 32. We'll never see what they have. We'll never see the vacation time that they have. And that's, you know, kind of a different thing that, that doesn't really necessarily mean like for men or women. All right, let's move on to workplace sexual harassment. So this is so common that it's causing an extreme amount of women to actually resign from their jobs, like at alarming rates. Do any of you guys have anything that you've experienced or know someone who's gone through this and like are willing to share? I know sometimes it's a difficult one. Where do I begin? (laughs) I will say this. When I first started, my job was in the assembly room. Okay. So we have, you know, would wear aprons and I would have to walk from the assembly room through manufacturing to the bathroom. Well, I was notified that the men in manufacturing uh, liked it when my apron went in between my my breasts and whenever I walked you know because I'm a chesty girl I know it it's always been an issue you know and my I guess when I'd walk my apron would kind of you know go to the middle of my chest and one boob would be hanging out whatever and um I got told that they liked it and I'm like "Mm -hmm." did a man say it to you well a girl told me that so they were like talking that yes Oh my gosh. Yes. That's uncomfortable. Yeah. I didn't like that. I made sure to keep either, you know, not have an apron on when I leave or keep it adjusted. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yes. There was a guy that I used to work with that would tell me he wanted to drive me in his truck and for me to sit on his lap and go over the bumps. Yeah. At your job said that to you? Oh yeah. He'd, yeah. He'd come up and like, he was like a face talker. He'd come like right up in your face, and like talk to you real close. And it was, he did that with everybody, but he's, he told me before. Now this was like when I first started, cause there's been multiple other things other than this, but this guy in particular, he actually got in trouble for sexual harassment. He actually Good. slapped a woman, slapped a woman's ass and a bunch of us girls from the area had to go up to HR and we got questioned about his behaviors. Did he get fired? No, actually he got, I think it was probably because of the union. He got moved to the other side of the plant away from who he slapped and whatever, you know. Like he physically put his hands on someone and he's still allowed to work yeah. there. Well, cause they, they would joke around, you know, about stupid sexual stuff like everybody does Mm -hmm. I you know I could say and he thought it would be funny or and or okay and she didn't like it so she I remember right she ended up punching him and he fell over and yeah he got in trouble that's good at least she did she have like did anything happen with her since she punched him no I mean she stayed she was but he you know I think missed work for a little while and then went up front to the other assembly room to work wow mine's a quick one so at my last job not the one that I'm currently at but still within the same like building I had to move parts from one area of the factory to another and you know how everybody a few years ago had like big lanyards that they would put their keys on and then they'd stick them in their pockets so that they didn't lose them and you could just pull them out of your pocket when you're ready to go. So I always did that with my keys so that I wouldn't lose them. Well, one of these guys thought that it was funny to continuously grab my lanyard over the course of the night. And every time he grabbed my lanyard, he touched my butt. And I told him the first time I was like, um, yeah, let's not do that. That's not cool. Number one. It was like, first of all, we're at work. Second of all, you don't know me like that anymore. Just because we went to school together doesn't mean you get to even remotely touch me without permission. I was like, number three, I am married. That is inappropriate. Don't do it again. If you do it again, we're going to have problems. So like throughout the whole course of the night, like probably 10 different times he grabbed it. The last time I snapped, I was like, don't freaking touch me. So I approached my boss at almost the end of my shift. I was like, do you have a minute? I need to talk to you. And he's like, well, is it important? Cause I'm kind of busy. Like, yeah, it is kind of important. It's about sexual harassment. And he goes, well, why didn't you say that? So if I wouldn't have said that it was about sexual harassment, you would have blown me off, continued on your way and basically just went about the rest of your day and nothing would have been done. 
But because I said it was about sexual harassment, that's the only reason he stopped and took time to find out about it. So I told him what had happened. He went in, he got the kid and took him into his office and was like, this is your last straw. Like you have no more chances after this. If anything else happens, you're done. I'm like, so what would have happened if I wouldn't have waited for you and I would have just decked him in the face for touching me after I told him numerous times not to touch me? He's like, well, you would have lost your job. You put, you put your hands on it. I said, but he sexually harassed me and continued to do it after I told him not to. I'm like, so that would have been self-defense, but I still would have lost my job. Well, I don't think you would have lost your job technically. They would have to have investigated and looked into it. Because, I mean, there's been, I know, you know, there's been several other little fist fights that have happened through there. And they mostly tried to investigate, you know, who started what and what was going on. But that's still not right. So Ashley and Shay work at the same place, just so to bring everything together. So if you guys, <laughs> if you guys don't, aren't yes, yeah, getting so. that, that's, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have a few examples, but I'll do like the top ones that come to mind. So the first one that I thought of while we were just talking about this, well, maybe I shouldn't say that one. I'll go to the next one. (laughs) No, you Um, share it all. Share it all. I know. Jody's like encouraging my over disclosures. Okay. The first one, whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to overshare now. It's hidden at the end of the episode. It'll be fine. Um, No, there was what I was thinking of when we were talking about this. I hadn't necessarily made the connection before, but I was really young. There was one job that I worked at where I ended up like hooking up with my boss where I'm like in retrospect, like I was really young. He was a little older than me, like probably wasn't, you know, (laughs) the best situation, but like whatever. The one that that I was going to do though, of my actual example, I had this guy that worked with us that worked in the office with me at a previous position I was in. And there was this benefit that was going on. And part of the benefit was uh, somebody from the company had to do like a dance performance and he was doing the dance performance or whatever. So he'd been practicing outside of work and like coming into work and trying to like show us his dance moves, which everyone was just kind of annoyed with because he was just a very annoying person in general. But I remember one day specifically, I shared an office with another girl and he came into our office and like he kept trying to like grab both of us and just like make us dance and like doing these like dance moves. And it was just like the most awkward, uncomfortable. Like we had very clearly said, stop. We'd said, no, we'd said like, don't touch us. And he just kept and kept and kept. And so there was that. And then he would always make these little comments. Like he was talking about um, a lot of it in relation to the dance and this specific example, at least. But um, at one point he was talking about like, oh, I'm a dirty little schoolboy, which like, it's gross, right? I know it's gross, but like people would like laugh it off and be like, oh, it's just this guy. Like he doesn't get it. He's just awkward. And I'm like, no, if I came into the office and I started grabbing male coworkers and like trying to make them dance with me and shimmying on them. Him and saying like oh I'm a dirty little schoolgirl. like no one would be like oh Aaron you're so funny like, <laughs> like no absolutely not um that was super gross this was the same guy who would also send everyone an email on international women's day with like the most sexist jokes and like tell it all of the women like it's internet happy international women's day get me a coffee woman <laughs> And like, so I eventually talked to, I did talk to like the manager at the time about it. And like, but the feedback was just like beyond disappointing. Basically what they said is they're like, oh, he just, that's just his personality. Like he doesn't really get it. And then I was like, with it, when it came to like the sexist jokes, I was like, but this, come on, like this one at least. And they're like, oh, he doesn't mean it. And I was like, no. I was like, if this was like Black History Month and I sent all of our Black employees like racist jokes, would you would you be like, oh, it's just Erin. Like she, that she means well. Like, no, that's fucked up. Like that's so fucked up. But yeah, their whole thing was like, oh, he's not really sexist. He just doesn't get it. And I'm like, no, I'm, I, I think he's, he's doing this stuff because he is really sexist. Like these things that he's doing are rooted in sexism, period. And anyways, he did not get consequenced at all. His end result was a promotion uh, for, for all of the hardships that, because he became very frustrated with all of the women in the department who were lashing out against him. And so in an effort to calm him down, they gave him a fucking promotion. That's bullshit. 
Yeah. So he's like a toddler and they were like coddling him. See, that's the problem with yeah. these men is there's no consequences to their actions. People just make excuses for them. Like, oh, that's just his personality. That's just how he is. He doesn't mean it because it's easier just to brush it under the rug. So the, the harassment and the way that he speaks to people just continues because there's no consequences and it's such bullshit. Mm-hmm. Even the Ashley story, just moving him to another department, like that did nothing to actually resolve the situation no because he continued on doing it again later to other girls of course he did of course you know talking like dirty and just stupid stuff i mean there was i i heard it you know not necessarily to me but other girls you got a cute girl walking through their you know delivered parts or doing something like that he'd be all over it talking to her and he was a what mid 50s worn out i don't know just an older man that you would not think that women would be gravitated to but he made sure that he did this talk is why to so lady. many women are like scared to go to work mm-hmm. and don't, and like prefer to work from home because these men just get away with it mm-hmm. uh, my story i don't know if it necessarily falls under being sexually harassed in the traditional sense or if it's more of a discrimination thing but generally so I work in the gosh, last 12 15, 15 years I worked in the spa industry as, as a, either a therapist or running a clinic so I've gotten all the different things of people just hear that you're a massage therapist and think you're a masseuse and think that you're just going to do happy endings that that's all you do <laughs> so like even just from clients, um, the harassment on, on that is, is just overwhelming. And then pop culture doesn't make it any easier. You watch even friends, you know, like Phoebe is, it calls herself a masseuse and no actual therapist calls themselves a masseuse. Um, but I worked for, um, several different businesses and the general rule when it came to minors was that if you were going to work on a minor they had if they were under like 14 or under like 13 you had to be with like the same gender therapist and like a parent had to be in the room but if they were 14 to 17 they had to be with the same gender therapist but they could be alone um in the room like they didn't need a parent or if they wanted like the opposite gender um then the parent had to be in the room like those were just kind of standard things is nobody wants you know like a 12 year old girl getting massaged by like a 30 year old man even if he is appropriate like it's just weird you know it's not the most relaxing or most comfortable thing the 12 year old's not going to necessarily like you know it's talking like an athlete or something it's not necessarily going to like talk about what's actually hurting them and, and no progress is really going to be made so I, I stand by the rule the rule is fine however I worked for a chiropractor who then found out that I was gay that was well, can you be alone in the room with, with a minor, like with the same gender, because you like the same gender. <laughs> so, so then I was barred from working on any minors unless the parent was in the room because I was gay. Wait, so now all of a sudden, because you're gay, you're like also a potential predator. <laughs> like, no, that, I mean, that's generally the concept. Like usually people hear that you're gay, especially more in men, I would say that they think, oh, you're just a pedophile then. Like if you're gay, you're a pedophile. So yeah, so then my like situation, like I was not allowed to work on any minors um, unless the parent was in the room, no matter the gender. I, I was an exception to the rule because I was gay. So I don't, like I said, I don't know if it necessarily is being sexually harassed versus just being discriminated or a little I bit of I was going to say that's like beyond <laughs> discriminated. Like that's awful. Like that, that fell, that fell into, into both. And this, I mean, this guy had other issues. Like he made us pray, like he forced you to pray before work in like, there was all other sorts of red flags and things that were happening in this place that caused me to leave. But that was like, that was the final straw. <laughs> So like a massage therapy cult place or something like what is happening? He was a born again Christian. And I feel that out of any religious background, they're probably like the worst to deal with because they're even more like high and mighty on, on the gospel and the word and and stuff. So just once he found out I was gay, like he, I could tell he almost even wanted to fire me right there, but then realized like, well, he couldn't legally (laughs) So, oh so then he just, so like, yeah, so his whole thing was a Christian atmosphere. It was like, it was a chiropractic, 
place. So it was all like he had Christian music playing, you know, like in the doctor's office and, you know, there was crosses and Christian side. I mean, it looked like Hobby Lobby, honestly, like you walked in there. <laughs> so yeah so then like me being gay and then the whole minor rule because he had a lot of athletes I mean the the towns that I the the places I usually sought out at was where they did sports medicine that was my bigger background is I wanted to work with athletes I didn't care which sport so you know rehabilitation injuries preventing injuries so you're you can also be working with kids who were in travel leagues and and stuff and so it lost a lot of my clientele that I I had once he found out that I was gay because he didn't want me (laughs) even though the parents had no problems like I had not one client feel uncomfortable not one parent feel uncomfortable but they moved their appointments because they didn't have the time to sit in the room during you know the appointment because they either had other kids or other you know, whatever. So like, I I can't see her anymore because I physically can't be in the room and you're not letting my child just go in with her, even though I'm saying it's okay. That's awful. Yeah. Oh my goodness. There was a few that I could think of. Um, One, I worked at a place one time where a guy, when I would post new pictures on social media, he would always come up to me like the next day and show me that he had taken screenshots of it and, but had like zoomed in on my face. And I always thought that was really weird. But then there was one time when he was showing me like this whole folder he had of zoomed in pictures of my face. And in the middle of them was a picture of his dick. And he kind of like sat on it for a second and then like kept scrolling and then like didn't say anything. And I didn't say anything because I was kind of startled. Like, did you seriously just show me that? Like, what the fuck? He ended up getting fired. But working in like the hair industry for so long. Um, Most of mine has not come from coworkers, but it's the clients and these men come in and they'll do things and it's happened. There's so many things like, you know, they've got a cape on top of them. So you can tell when they're doing things to themselves under the cape, which happens a lot more than you would think. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll put their arms on like the, the armrests on the chair And then turn their hand out. So they're grabbing at you, but to make it not so obvious, but they'll grab like, or try and like hold your leg or something while you're trying to cut their hair, which is extremely uncomfortable. Walk-ins in those like chain salons, you never know who you're going to get. And a lot of times you don't like them. So that's, that's some of the stuff that I've experienced. So, all right. Corporate hiring processes put women at a systemic disadvantage. Women's resumes are being passed over in favor of men stirring consideration for executive positions. Have any of you guys ever been passed over for a better position by a man just because he's male? Absolutely. There was, okay, so at my last job, same factory I met, I had been there probably about a year and a half already. I had already applied for one promotion to supervisor because I have, my background is 10 years supervisor experience. And then the factory work on top of it. I applied for it. The first time I was told that they had gone with another candidate, they didn't tell me who or why. I found out later that I got passed over for a man and that he had been promised when he applied that he was going to be hired in as a supervisor, which is bullshit because he had no experience, no prior supervisor experience, no prior factory experience, and no experience whatsoever doing the job that we were doing. So a few months later, I worked by myself a lot because a lot of the people that came in just didn't last very long in the job. So I trained this new guy that came in. He had like 20 years in the factory, yada, yada, blah, 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 whatever. So I trained him in my job and it took him weeks, like weeks to learn my job. My job isn't, my job wasn't that hard. I learned it. I mean, okay, I'm a fast learner, but I learned my job in like two weeks. Everything I needed to know about it, I learned it in two weeks. And this guy took probably six to eight weeks to learn it completely. And he still didn't have it down. So when this next promotion came up, I applied for it, put my resume in. I gave him all my my history. Like I answered all the interview questions like I was supposed to. They were shocked at my answers because of how much experience I have and how knowledgeable I was just in a supervisory capacity. So then my boss comes out to me after they selected the candidate and then they have to go back through and notify everybody that applied for it. So this time he comes out and he says, 
you didn't get it this time because you wear your emotions on your sleeve and you're too emotional. So we went with this person. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, he's been here not even three months. I said, I trained him as my replacement or my help. And you're going to give him the supervisor position. And I've got more seniority over him. I'm like, that's bullshit. That is bullshit. Also the whole like too emotional thing. I'm sorry, but (laughs) I have never worked with women who are as bitchy and catty as the men that I have worked with. Like across the board, the whole like women are too emotional. Women are, no, men are the ones generally and whatever. I shouldn't generalize. I know not all men, whatever. But like, it tends to be more often men that are the ones who are less emotionally stable and more quick to like lash out or be angry. Or like and they're apart. sneaky and they'll do sneaky things to try and get in better positions and manipulate okay. and like, oh yeah. Not that I've worked in a lot. Like I've worked mostly in salons, but other places that I've worked, it's crazy how catty and manipulative and sneaky men are. Yep. I feel like every woman that I've worked with, like, would be able to relate to this concept of like tiptoeing around the fragile egos of men that we work with, whether they're on the same level or higher or not, and having to be careful about if you come on too strong or act smarter or overstep or anything, it it hurts their ego and they can't handle it. And then they'll like, shut you out of meetings or whatever, where I don't see that same thing in most women. I think there's two types of women in the workplace though. I think there's women who are uh, two types of ambitious women. I'll say, I think there are women who want to help other women and who, who want to give opportunities to women like in general. And then I think there are women who just want to be in the boys club. Like when you look at women who are trying to climb to the top, you're one of two. You either are like, we need more women at the top. And I want to like lift other women up with me or I don't care about all that. I just want to be in the boys club. There was a point where I was trying to get a, my title changed to a manager position because my job description was reflective of manager responsibilities and not the position that I was in. And at the time I was told that that was not possible because of certain circumstances. And then that dude that previously mentioned dude that was like sexually harassing everyone and just like a complete douche caboosh, he ended up getting a promotion without the same things that they were like, well, we can't do that right now because of this. And and I've seen it in VP roles a lot where, where if there's a VP position up, the, the male person will get it regardless of whether they're the most qualified. And they'll say, oh, it's because women are, are unstable. But like we just were talking about, like men are way more emotional and unstable than women. Microaggressions are subtle comments or behaviors that can feel too small to take a stand against. But the reality is they are constant around women in most workplaces and seriously add up. Can you think of some microaggressions that you guys have experienced? I have like 8 million, but (laughs) I'll limit myself. (laughs) Okay. One that I have heard that I think is really frustrating. I've been on calls with men who have made comments along the lines of, I heard one, one specifically, the guy said, oh, well, she's got eight kids at home already. So, you know, I don't know that we want to add any more to her plate. I was like, what does that have to do with this project and whether or not we should loop her in and like give her an opportunity in the workplace? You know what I mean? I've heard multiple comments like that where somebody's like, oh, well, you know, she's got kids at home, so I don't want to add stress to her. And they're they're doing it as like, oh, we're trying to be nice men, but it's not. It's coming from a place of like, we're going to lessen her opportunities because like, well, nobody says that about the men. Nobody's like, oh, John or Jason or whoever like has kids at home. We don't want to stress him out. Never. Uh, So that's one that is super annoying. And which is part of why I don't ever talk about like having kids at work or anything like that. Like I would just as soon them not know or forget because I don't want that like stereotype like, oh, she's got kids or she's a single mom or whatever. Like it's fucking so annoying. Also another one. And I don't know that this is really a microaggression so much as it is a male privilege, but the, the men all going out to dinners together, like you'll have like male directors or whatever that will go and grab dinner and chat and do lunch and have a business talk or go grab beers after work and things like that. This concept of like that old school boys club, like it's real and it still exists and it does impact opportunities because as those relationships grow, 
that is where the opportunities, you know, as and mentorships are happening, and that's where their promotions are going to stay, and they're going to want to help each other out. And when they're helping each other out in the boys club, guess who they're not helping? Anyone who's not in the boys club, which is uh, the women. <laughs> Another one is not letting women speak on calls. This is one that I know a lot of women have experienced. If you're on a conference call or in a meeting, the men will just talk and talk over you or ignore your ideas. This is one of my favorites when you state an idea and they ignore it. And then later a man repeats that idea that you just said as though it's like new and then his own and everyone then suddenly thinks it's great. And the man's planning, like I have been walked through processes that I have taught a man how to do. And then they'll like set up time to walk me through it when I've already taught it to them. Yeah, I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to stop myself because I bet you guys have some examples as well. <laughs> I just got so worked up there. I'm sorry. Dude, I don't think, <laughs> I think the mansplaining stuff drives me crazy. And I think it's all men, like literally all men with that. Even my husband and I call him out and I'm like, I know, like he'll start to explain something. I'll be like, okay, yes, I know. I know. And he'll keep going. And I'm like, I know, dude, stop. Like. <laughs> But yeah, um, the microaggression stuff, I think me and you had talked, I think you talked about this on a previous episode. I think it was like emails or something where a woman would send an email and it basically gets ignored or something. But then if you change the name that it's from a man, then it's taken seriously. Wasn't, wasn't, I swear that was a conversation that we had a while ago. It might've been, I think the same is true with resumes. They've done testing on like, if it's a male or female resume, where the only thing they change is the name. They've also done that with race as well. And race is even, I don't want to say even worse, but I, I think even worse with race. If you chose like an ethnic sounding name of any type, like you would pretty much get You're put on the bottom of the pile, put on the yeah. bottom, like they would Ridiculous. just like toss it out with the same and it, was it James was like the highest one to get hired James or John or something something like mediocre white dude sounding <laughs> <laughs> oh but I I thought of one more that I was gonna say and I didn't this was a long time ago I had a a VP tell me that I seemed like I was high maintenance he was like you seem like you're um pretty high maintenance and it was just the most like what the fuck? I don't even know if he meant it in a mean way or not, but it was like, what I wanted to say was like, dude, you don't schedule your own haircuts and I'm, I'm a high maintenance. (laughs) No, like what the fuck? (laughs) But I just felt like, not that that was sexual harassment or anything, but I do think that that was rooted in sexism because you would never go up to a guy and be like, oh, you seem really high maintenance. They'd be like, oh, you seem like you know what you want. You seem like you are secure. You seem like you like the finer things in life. Whatever it is, it wouldn't be high maintenance as the descriptor. But yet women can go in and they can know what they want. They can be confident. And then we're, you know, they classify us as a whole nother. You're high maintenance. You're too much. You're this, that, and the other thing. And it's just annoying, like. Or if you ever just say no or yeah. turn down a man, you're everything under the sun. But that's a like whole other have- episode we could have. We- Luckily, like the, com- the, the latest company that I worked for it, it, or the longest that I worked for was really good at hiring, you know, based on qualifications versus names, ethnicity, gender, anything like that. But the... Biggest part of my job was also the customer service side of the job is dealing with like the members who were coming in and the men were always the worst um, if they had a complaint and it would always be the, well, can I talk to, you know, the supervisor or the manager or whatever? I'm like, well, I am the manager. Like you're talking to me. No, I want to know who's, who's above you. Well, there's nobody above me. Like I'm it. Like that's no, no, you're a woman. There needs to, there should be a man. Like who's the man in charge? There's not a man in charge. It's me. I am the the manager. Like there's no one above me. I make the final decision. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. And they were the ones who like were the most Karen-y of everybody. (laughs) Like women, like, yeah, they would get, you know, vulgar or yell or whatever, but the men through like the worst tantrums, that's where I would see like the microaggressions of the, the snide comments of, 
oh, well, you know, tell, you know, your husband must beat you at home or something. So you have to be a bitch here or but like comments like that, that would come from, from clients, not like my coworkers, but like, it was insane. Like I got promoted to take on another clinic um, cause my owner owned multiple locations. And so I got to handle them, both of them. And one of the customers who was always just one of, one of those guys that you would say that about of, oh, just him, like take him with a grain of salt, like whatever. He got me a pink toolbox as a gift when they made my announcement of my promotion and I was like really and then when I opened it it was stuffed with female products like he took the tools out and it was stuffed with tampons and pads and like my doll and and this was a client like I said a client not the not the company not anybody I worked with it was a client I wouldn't let him have his way so that was his way of getting back at me so that was that was fun where do men get their audacity seriously (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think was the Betty White quote, like, like, why do they like call them pussies or whatever, like the, the balls one like that, like is the best. <laughs> but I don't know the quote. Why do they call them pussies or balls? That's, that's the- <laughs> no, it's- no, she says, why do they, they, she, Betty White always said, why do they tell people to grow a set of balls? She said, when you that you should tell them to grow a vagina because a vagina can take a pounding and keep on going you kick them in the balls once and they're down for the count or if you flick them if you flick it like if yeah. the tiny touch of a ball they squeeze yep. a vagina can yep. take a pounding. betty white was a legend may she rest in peace yes <laughs> let's <laughs> move on to joe james yes <laughs> So this week, you know, I feel like I've been taking it back a lot lately, but I have been listening to Patrick Swayze. She's like the wind. Oh, I love that. I I love that song. So much. Yes. It's a good one. So what do you got, Jess? Um, Well, as you know, I have been re-watching multiple times Twilight. Yes. Uh, Literally just doing back-to-back multiple marathons for like three weeks now. So mine's Thousand Years by Christina Perry. <laughs> so good. That's so I, I good. I my foster son and sing it to him because I'm like, it's, I know it's like it's a romantic song, but like I look at him and I'm like, he's, he's my everything. So I hear that song and I, like, I tear up. It's, it's bad. Same. That song, I listened to it right after I got pregnant because I, tr- we tried so hard to get pregnant and then mm-hmm. it, I felt like it kind of matched. Like I've died like waiting for you you know what I mean so I get it I get it yes like I've been the forever auntie in all of my social groups so to now be in like the mom group I'm like I'm finally here (laughs) (laughs) what do you got Ashley I have been really into the song called save me by jelly roll yeah it's a little different than what I normally listen to I guess because I think he's like more rap or something isn't he I think so. I think he's a little bit everything, but he played recently at the Grand Ole Opry, which is kind of different. I wasn't expecting that. Really? Yeah. So yeah. I, I think he's a little bit of everything. Okay. Well, I, I follow his gonna... wife on TikTok. She's hilarious. You ever see her videos? Really? I, well, I had no idea he was married or anything. Yeah. Well, I don't remember what her name is on there or anything, but I just, I just think she's funny, but that's a really good song. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. What do you got Shay? I have found a lot of different artists on TikTok through the whole pandemic and everything. And I found this one, um, her name is Emlyn and the song is called Rapunzel. It's like a breakup song type thing, like really kind of angsty, but not so much angsty. It's more of like, she's taking her power back and not letting him like rule her life. Very good. What do you got, Erin? I have, this is a new one, also discovered via the TikTok, and it is called Best Worst X by Julia Cole and Alexandra Kay, and it is country, but it's very, like, upbeat, and I feel like it's one that's just really relatable to anyone who's dated men, but, (laughs) or anyone who's just had an ex, an ex that's done something fucking weird. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Like that. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I like Good that. One. Yeah. Anyone that's done something fucking weird. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Perfect. 
another one that I want to add just for all of us, because it's like our girl power kind of like women episode, Christina Aguilera can't hold us down. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yes. That's gonna that's that's like our song for all of us for this episode. I love so, it. And then we use some lyrics are so good for it. It's like this is for my girls all around the world who have come across a man that don't respect your worth. Yes. Yes. That was like little things are gonna go downhill. Like that was probably like the the start. Yeah, that was like the tail end of her like in she our... had a few good things after that. The it was, it was like the start. Like the like, jump off like, and like there were a couple like but right before she went to like prison then it was like er, it was, I knew Erin yeah. was gonna come to her defense like no you can't take her down like that. <laughs> Wait, she went to prison? Yeah. Yeah because she didn't did like snitch that. on somebody or something there was some like murder or something that she was like involved really? in or had information and she didn't snitch so she went to prison for three years and she, she got like a street cred from it but then completely fell off of the rap game. Back wow. when um, P. Diddy was puffy and he mm-hmm. was doing J-Lo, there was a, sh- a shooting at a nightclub and she lied and, and then didn't give up the information. So she served time to protect whoever. All three of them were, there was a bunch of celebrities there and she refused to say anything. But yeah, I, thought, I remember when that happened. I thought it was hilarious though in our dance at my junior year for dance team, the the medley started with the Newsboys and ended with that song. So I just thought it was hilarious because the Newsboys are like a pop Christian group. <laughs> yeah, that's and funny. It ended with, with the, the now it's time to dish fish. You better dish fish. You better dish fish. Dish a bitch, dish a bitch. I mean, bitch. Dish a bitch. <laughs> I like. <laughs> Can we record that clip of of Ashley and Shay and just make that the intro for every dish fish now? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, hands down. That's what's oh, happening. I'm totally down for it. <laughs> oh All my right, goodness. girls, you are so silly. So for dish fish today, we are going to play a little game called Incoherent. What I have here are a bunch of cards with some nonsense words on them, and I'm going to read them to you, and you guys are going to guess what it actually is, like what the sentence or word or noun is. Are you ready? Yes. All right. I have a bunch of them, so I probably won't do all of them, or we'll just see how fast it goes. So the first one is scent ink newts. Sending nudes. Sending nudes. Sending yes. nudes. <laughs> All right. Who got that? Shay? Yeah. Yes. Jake Hut Yum Amuck Cavi Uh. You'll never get this one. I can give you hints if you'd like. The hint is move your bum. Move your bum? That's the hint. <laughs> Jake Hut Yum Amuck Cavi Uh. I'm not a clue. <laughs> Shake your rump. Shake your Close. rump maker close something like that shake what your mama gave you oh. <laughs> all right next is call it tour his clitoris yes <laughs> <laughs> all right orc gasp him orgasm orgasm yes gotta be quicker than that all right <laughs> bop Log in, draw, hit. Pop, lock, and drop it. Yes. 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 (laughs) Cold, hen, chow, hair. Cold shower? Cold shower. Damn it. Nope. Golden shower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yep. I'll take the cold shower. (laughs) Golden shower. All right. Ear, reptile, this, funk, sheen. Erectile Erectile dysfunction. dysfunction. (laughs) All right. Who said it first? Me. Ashley. Erectile dysfunction. Fur rents switch pen of its. The hint is keeping it casual. French benefits? Yes. Oh my God. Good job, Ashley. (laughs) All right. Mean hut may in. Manhattan? Nope. The hint is quick burst. <laughs> three two me. one done me nut is it like a caveman thing like me nut <laughs> <laughs> no but it's close mean hut may in me nut it's minute man no idea 
Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> All right. Try yum bing. Try humping. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Shay. <laughs> All right. Toggled, hurt, heat, whom, he. This is a hard one. The hint is it. naughty language. Talk dirty to me. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job, Shay. All right. Calm, heed, at, T. Call me at three. Nope. Calamity? Nope. Committee? The hint is labeled father. Call me daddy. Yes. Oh <laughs> I was like, someone's going to get it. I know you guys are going to get it. Good job, Erin. All right. Boo, buzz, wet. Boobs, wet? Yes. Boobs, wet. Oh, boobs, sweat. <laughs> Ew. She, she kind of asked, like, was it boobs, sweat? Yes. All right. Stir, hip, purple. Strip. Strip poker. No. Strip. Strip or pull. Yes, stripper pole. Stripper pole. <laughs> Six dang. Dang. Texting. <laughs> yes. Very Why good. Why get the weird ones? Because <laughs> you are weird. <laughs> Though walk calves aim. The walk of shame. Yes. <laughs> the walk of shame. Very good. Boat deep hall. Booty call. Yeah. <laughs> Who said it first? I think I did. Ashley. All right. Okay. Bra, silly, and wax. Brazilian wax. Brazilian wax. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. Way to go, Jess. <laughs> Miss Shun, Harry Boss, itch Shun. Missionary position. Yes. <laughs> All right. And the last one is Drow, Gin, Gone, Dumbs. Trojan condoms. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good job. All right. In fourth place, Ashley with three. Woo! In third place, Jess with four. In second place, Aaron with five. And our winner tonight, Shay with seven. Woohoo! I like. We like. Good job. <laughs> good job, Shay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, ladies, is there anything else that we want to add to tonight's episode before we wrap it? Like a condom. Wrap I up. was just going to say <laughs> Wrap that. it up like a Trojan condom. <laughs> they a call drone, me daddy. Like a Drojan <laughs> gondoms. Speaking of daddies, hey, Ashley. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey. Oh, my God. Leave my daddy alone. <laughs> my daddy. Your dad doesn't listen to this podcast, does he? Uh, he knows about it. Uh, he, he'll he listen to it when <laughs> well, Ashley's on dead. it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Shoot your shot, Aaron. Please I think that. he that listens was to the so Enneagram one because I told him I was on it. Aww. Oh. Yeah. You didn't tell me you're on this one, so we have listened. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, he won't make it this far, I'm sure. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies, thank you again so much for joining us. I can't wait to have you all three back again sometime. Yay! If you yeah. have not, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Boom Tequila Podcast. Give us a good review, all the things. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Monday. Bye. 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 Send me some nudes. <laughs> <laughs>